G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and in this video we're going to be taking this grayscale line work image and turning it into a coloured stylistic image. Now there are a couple of videos associated with this picture so far. I've done a uh, speed painting where you can see the whole process including what I haven't yet done sped up which I would have released first uh, and I also did a tutorial which goes through how I bought it from a traditional artwork on a piece of paper into a digital medium on the computer, optimized and ready to go. So I've got this image here that I'm going to be working with and I'm going to go through a process through which I mostly improvise and come up with the stylistic finalized sort of image. Now the, th the uh, image I'm sort of kind of hoping to work towards, I want it to look like it's from ancient books even though like I know they're not ancient because in Warhammer 40k, you know, it's all in the future, but uh, I remember reading the codex and all that stuff when I used to play Warhammer 40k and everything was kind of, it had this kind of biblical ancient feel when you read the codex and the quotes that they had and the images that they had in their, their um, books and stuff looked like these ancient sort of images and I want to get that feel. So that's why I went with a, a hand-drawn pen and pencil sort of feel to start off with and I hope to complement that stylistically with a lot of texture and uh, some desaturated color implemented as well. So what I'm going to be doing first and foremost is organizing my layers and find the feel, find the basic setup of how I think it'll work through. So I do this in an improvised sort of way. First thing I want to do is create a new layer and I want to find how I'm going to layer in the colors. So I will use a few test colors. Now I want this character to be an ultramarine. So I'll find an ultramarine blue. And I'm just going to scribble in roughly where some of this blue will go. Now it doesn't have to be neat because I'm just going to find really how the colors are going to mix in and just give myself a bit of an idea as to how it will look. So I don't really need to do the whole thing or even most of it, but just I suppose that is quite enough. Maybe pick a few more colors, so the gold of the shoulders and the ultramarine sign, the wings, some skin. Where's a good skin color? Something like that. Just scribble it in. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to go through here in the blend modes area and I'm going to flick through until I find one I'm happy with. So multiply looks pretty good. I'll quickly flick through the rest. Linear burn doesn't look too bad. Let me compare those. Multiply, linear burn. I'll keep going through those. So I don't really like the rest of them, but I'll keep it on multiply. And so that's what I'm going to do when it comes to coloring is I'm going to use the multiply tool and just use raw colors and you see how that overlays. So I've got my test color thing there and I'm going to find ways of mixing textures and other layers to get that old style sort of look. So I have a couple of textures I found beforehand that I think will work well. So this is a cloudy sort of paper texture. So I'm just going to distort this until it fills the whole image like so. I'm fairly happy with that. Let me just stretch it a little bit past the corners so that we don't have any unsightly edges. Okay, and I'm going to flick through the blend modes on here. Multiply looks pretty good. That gets a really papery sort of feel. Keep going through. Linear burn again. Everything else is a bit too bright. Overlay is too bright. Everything else is quite extreme. So if I bring it over to multiply, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see what happens when we mix kind of more layers on top. So I'll bring in my other texture, which is this one here. It's a bit more of a, a raw paper texture. It's got kind of a, a linen feel to it as well. You can see like individual sort of texture areas on it. So I'll resize that. And if I go through here, let's see what we've got. Multiply, that's quite extreme. I'll just keep going through the blend modes. That's barely visible, but it's not that bad. It brings in the creases. That's quite good. Soft light. I don't mind that. Let's go back to multiply. 
I kind of like this, but it's too harsh. So something I'm going to try, I'm going to select my background layer, which was just the white and black, and I'm going to drag it down here to new layers and bring that to the very top where it overlays, and I'm going to add an overlay to this. So I'll find one to see if adding the line work in white on top of all these layers softens it a bit more. Ah, uh, there we go. So you can see already soft light. So when I bring in soft light, it kind of brings a bit of an equilibrium. So with these two textures, I've got a, um, a multiply on both of these, but it brings it to be really dark. So with the line work background of the black and white put on top on soft light, it really evens it out quite a bit. So if I hide those and then make them come up again, I'm starting to really kind of get that look that I had in mind. Problem is, is it's, uh, it's a bit too saturated, a bit too much color. So I want to paint with raw, rich colors, but I also want to take a bit of that away uh, after I've painted them. So I'm going to add a layer, just a blank layer, and paint black over the whole thing, and then turn this into a color layer. So it turns it into black and white, and then I can just bring down the opacity. So if I have it around 30, that means that it's 30% tinted to be black and white. So you can see when I bring that in, it really brings in that old papery look. I use this quite a lot. In fact, nearly in every image I do, I desaturate it just by kind of doing this and it lets me have a lot of control over it without permanently changing it. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm almost happy with the look, almost. Um, but I think it needs a, a bit of extra balancing. So what I'm gonna do is here in my adjustments panel, I'm gonna change the brightness contrast a little bit. So I'm going to hit brightness contrast and I'm going to bring it up, bring the contrast up. There we go. Okay. All right. So I quite like that. Uh, naturally, when you work with images, their brightness and contrast, when you bring up the contrast, it ups the contrast of the color as well. So even if you've desaturated it, it brings up that saturation. So when I find this is somewhere I like it with the brightness and contrast, which seems to be somewhere around here. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll close that, but I want to bring up the saturate the uh sorry, bring down the saturation by turning up the opacity of my color layer. So when I bring that up, there you go. So we remove some of that saturation. So I think this is oops, I'll just save. This is the kind of look I'm going for. And the last thing I'll do is add a uh, gradient on top. So you can see I add this black and I just kind of add gradients going out on each corner and each edge like this. Okay, and then I soften it to a low percentage. Okay, so in doing that, you can see if I hide it and make it visible, it frames the image in a kind of hugging sort of way. It softens the edges. Okay, and what I've, what I've really been doing is finding uh, the final look of the image before I actually go straight into doing the color, uh, which I think helps me because that means I can hide all of these at once and just see the raw color and just paint all the color and every now and then when I want to see what it looks like in context I can just do that make them appear make them disappear and so I have the ability to go through and just hide and then make visible the final picture without having to wait until I get there to do it so what I'm going to do next now that I've got my uh, decision made on coloring that it's going to be multiplied, I'm going to do this in a bit of a different way. I'm going to take this off of multiply, put it on normal. I'm going to make a folder and I'll call this color. And then I'll drag that layer into the color folder and I'll make the folder multiply. And so that does the same thing, but instead of applying multiply to all of the color layers that I do, it I can add as many layers in this folder as I want and it applies to all of them and then I can change the settings of the folder. That way I can have as many layers as I want for all colors without having to apply that setting. And I'm going to do something for the first time in a tutorial and that's going to be using the paint, uh, the lock transparent layers button which is this one here, lock transparent pixels. So basically this means if I paint an area in blue, let's say this shoulder area here, so uh, just for the sake of an example, I'll just paint the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to lock transparent pixels by clicking that button. And if I select a darker blue, 
hit OK and then paint. It does the same thing as a clipping mask without creating a clipping mask and it just paints directly on that layer. So that means I'm able to add shading without creating all these uh, large numbers of layers. Now it is somewhat irreversible. So what I'm going to be doing first that you'll see me do is I'm going to go through and paint all of the flat colors on the image. Now this will take a while so I'm going to fast forward through the whole process but starting now that's what you're going to be seeing me do. I'm going to add all of the raw color to the entire image in all the layers under this color folder. So it will take a while. I'll fast forward it a fair amount and then you'll see the final result. Alright, so I've finished doing my colouring and while on the surface it might look like I've done more than I uh, said I did, like it looks like I've done quite a lot, I actually really haven't. So if I select my colour folder and change this from multiply back to the default pass through, you can see exactly what I've done. I've painted these as flat colours and there's really no extra detail. Everything is just kind of like a solid colour base and then when the multiply is applied over this line work, turning it to multiply you can see that it merges it with the line work okay so I've got the basics and uh, before I start making things pop out a little more and adding a little more uh, refinement and difference and all that uh, I feel like the line work is a little too strong the black is a bit too harsh so what I'm going to do in both instances of the line work being around I'm going to change it to uh, a bit more of a, a sapia tone so I'm going to duplicate this background by clicking and dragging down to this new layer thing and I'm going to double click and go color overlay oops yeah we know that's actually correct and I'm going to select a color that's like a, a murky brown, like this. Hit OK. And then I'm going to change blend mode to, let's find a good one, Screenworks, Linear Dodge. I think I'll go with Linear Dodge. OK. So I quite like that. You can see that that's a sapia tone instead. So I'm going to right click on this and rasterize the layer style so it becomes a flat image. And I'm going to see how this looks with the color overlay. That's a bit softer, maybe a bit too soft. So we'll go back in there again. I'll undo that rasterize. Bring it down to a darker brown. All right, and then I'll rasterize that. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. And what I'm gonna do is, when I make this overlay appear, you can see everything's quite solid and quite dark. So I'm gonna duplicate my background copy bring it up here, hide the black and white one, or in fact delete it completely, and I'll use the overlay that that one had, and I believe it was lighter colour. No, it wasn't. In fact, I'll have to go back and check. It was soft light. Okay, my bad. So I'll delete that. I'll turn this one to soft light. There we go. So already it's much more organic looking. It's not as harsh. It's still fairly fairly tough on with the lines and all that but it's it's quite good I'm happy with that okay so I feel like that that is in, an improvement personally I'll merge those layers into the background and so I've got a few parts to this image I've got my sapia tone grayscale background I've got my color applied on top of that and that's divided into a few areas I'll hide the background and show you what they are I've got my foreground I've got the space marine there the Tyranid and the Orc, all just painted blockily, nothing too crazy. The midground, which is basically just a silhouette, 
and then the background which is the smoke with a bit more darkness and then the red hue of the background. So that on top of the line work comes together like that and then with the overlays that we put in place beforehand we get this sort of look. So now we can start messing around with the look to get more of a final look. So I feel like there's a little too much saturation so I'm going to desaturate it a bit because remember we want to go for that old papery look. Uh, speaking of which, maybe we'll try moving this line layer under the paper layers so it doesn't look as good under both. Perhaps if I bring up the brightness contrast. So brightness, contrast. Maybe not too much contrast, maybe just the brightness. It's tricky, you've got to find a good balance that you're happy with. Okay, I think that's quite good. Alright, I'm happy with that. And we're starting to get it to feel a little better. I'm going to put this between the two paper layers because I think it was a bit too weak before. Again, this is very much an improvised sort of process. So uh, it's kind of like figuring it out as you go along. It's a bit too saturated, so I'll desaturate it a bit more. And I'm starting to like how this feels. So what I'm going to start doing now is mix in a little more color just to mess with the lighting a little bit. So for example on this Space Marine character he's just got the solid blue. I'm going to go in here to my Space Marine layer where the blue is right here and I'm going to add a clipping mask by adding a new layer and alt clicking the line between those layers. I'll call it lighting and I'm going to select an orange, a really bright orange. And I'm just going to see what this looks like. Bring down the opacity. Okay, so I don't mind that. So I'll bring this up and I'm going to put in some of this orange. And I'm going to place it all throughout where the blue is to reflect a bit of the background and I'll flick through my color settings to see which of the overlays fits best. So lighter color works all right. I don't mind vivid light. It's got to mix with the blue. Ah, see, that's interesting. A bit of a greeny blue works quite well as well, which tells me I should try something different. So I'm going to delete that. I'll go back to my normal color and I'll select a completely different color. Let's go with a, a bright blue go with something a little more eerie because I think it'll make it pop a bit. So I'm going to bring up my brush size and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the highlights more blue. I'll select a blue I'm happy with first like this. I'll make the highlights lighter and I'm going to then make the shadowy areas more red. And I think that'll work well with the environment light. And I'm going to go around uh, through the layers and I'm going to apply this to different areas. I'm going to go through, add clipping masks and add uh, gradient changes to the actual colors. So it shouldn't take me too long, but it should add a bit of a difference. And I'll speed up that process for you now. Alright, so I've got something I'm happy with now. So I'll show you what I've done. Basically, when I hide these layers, you can see this is what the color layer looks like. So uh, it's uh, on its own, quite ridiculous looking, but that's okay because it's meant to be applied in the context of all of these things put together. So the next thing we're going to do is balance the uh, textures and everything kind of being laid together, find things to make pop out with the uh, dodge and burn tools, uh, and then f add our final layer composition. So we're going to go into our overlay here, and we're going to go layer by layer just to make sure everything fits okay. So we've got our multiply on our first paper texture here, which I'm happy with. We've got our pass, uh, we've got our soft light, sorry, on our extra line work thing. 
and our next layer of paper. Now I might put the line work back on top. We've got the desaturation, the brightness contrast and the edging. So all of these things come together to look like this. Now desaturation, I'm just going to mess with these things until I find. Now remember the look I'm wanting is that uh, that look as if it's from a codec, you know, those s tomes that the Space Marines use to tell their stories. So I want to find a good balance of all this stuff. I'll bring down the opacity. Now one thing I can do is add uh, edges like edges of a piece of paper to get that look. So I'm going to find a texture of a piece of paper and I'll see what what works. Okay, so I found one on Google Images that I think will work quite well. So outside of the context of all these other layers, I'm gonna hit paste and this is what I ended up with. So I quite like this. Now I'm going to scale this to the size of the image and stretch it a bit. Now, what's happening is the these edges here, they kind of pop out a little bit too much. So I want to transform them to be smaller like this. So I'm just going to squeeze them in. Marquee, transform and squeeze them in just so it's a little more flush with the edges. Now it doesn't have to be exact. I just kind of want to get the um, most of the image in. So bring it in and do this with all of the sides until I have a slightly more square thing. Now I'm going to grab this area, right click, free transform and then a right click hit uh, warp and just pull in that corner and pull in these other edges because that corner pops out a little bit too much and then hit enter. So I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. Now I need to find a good overlay setting and oh that looks good, multiply. So I'll flick through these, see what there is on offer. That's kind of cool but it murkies things up too much. Okay so multiply was the best so I'm going to transform this to the size of the image. And as you can see, what I'm going to be using is the burnt edges from the image of this multiply. So once I've got it to the size I want, which is about that, I'm going to warp this corner, so free, free transform and warp that corner down. Hit enter. Okay. So I'm going to get my magic wand, hit the edge, and it selects all of the edge around there. I'm going to go on the layer above, go f uh, select, modify, and expand the uh, edge selection by four. Hit enter. Right click and fill black. So there we go. Very, very quickly, I've got what looks like a piece of parchment. And that is the look that I'm going for. So I'm going to tweak a, the overlay settings just a little bit more so I get exactly what I want. Mess with the mess with the um, saturation. All of this funky stuff. I want it looking like a nice piece of parchment, but I also don't want to lose too much of the image itself. Bring up the saturation a little bit. Hmm. It's kind of hard to find the balance, isn't it? difficult and I'm fairly happy with that I'm curious to see what it looks like with a, an overlay of um, like a plaster overlay so I bring in one of the textures that I use quite often it's this plaster one 
there we go and let's see what this looks like if I scale it to the size of the image kind of gives it a bit more of a gritty feel now I don't want to overdo it but I, I do want to see what it looks like with a few different settings see that's not bad soft light let's go to soft light again because it does soften the harshness of the image but it might do so too much and kind of drain it out a little bit so it really is a balancing act and hard to get right and you can see what I mean when I say improvise because it's such an improvised process coming to be happy with how it's turning out finding the balance that I think works okay so I think I've got something I'm pretty happy with so I'm going to keep that and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything in the whole image right click duplicate layers and hit OK and then I'm going to right click on these and hit merge layers so I've got one flat image so if I hide everything you can see it's just this one image okay so I'm going to mess with this just a little bit so I'm going to duplicate that so I have a double copy of it and I'm going to select my dodge tool and you can see that dodge kind of makes things pop out a little bit and I'm just going to lightly brush over some areas like the face like this guy at the front and his details reason being is it just makes it pop that little bit more and that's what we want we want it to stand out from the background so I'm put it on the Tyranid a little bit on the Orc but mostly on this guy at the front and you can see that that makes them kind of jump out a little bit more it's kind of hard to find the balance but we are kind of getting the look that we want and then finally I'm going to grab my burn tool and just go over the edges to burn the edges of that paper even more really bring in the foreground quite a lot frame the image okay now there's a couple of things that I kind of neglected to do you can see how already that really kind of frames the image um, I just want to do a couple of small things I want to add a little visual effects nothing too crazy but a little motion and fire behind these drop pod missile looking thingies so I'm going to select these with a gradient in that selection I'm going to get a bright yellow and fill it in like this and erase this soften it now it's not going to stay like this I'm just kind of doing something that I hadn't done previously and I did want it to overlay the lines anyway okay so something as simple as that works quite effectively and I will leave that and I'm going to come over here to the aeroplane and do a little something similar with the brush make it a really small brush I'm just going to follow the, the lines of these bullets just to show the firing action like 
that. Bring down the opacity and just add some flash. There we go. So when I fit to screen, there, that's all I wanted. I might actually bring down the saturation so it's a bit closer to white. So bring down that saturation just to fit the image overall. And I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So adjustment, saturation. Again, this is really such an improvised sort of process. But then when I merge these layers, you can see the difference between that and that. So I've got a little bit more action happening, an overall decent look. Mess around with these. I always mess around, it's such a process of just mucking around. All right, so I'm quite happy with how this looks. Ladies and gentlemen, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It hasn't been very specific on how to do something in particular, just kind of a bit of an exploration. But you can see how we got from that grayscale lined image uh, into something much more stylistic and coloured in. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And until next time, I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on Newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.